On Saturday, November 21st, Wisconsin deer hunters will climb into those deer stands, take to the woods, go to their own favorite haunts, because it's the start of the annual gun deer hunt, which means it's Wisconsinized preview of that hunt with Kevin Wallenfang, big game ecologist for the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. Welcome back, sir. Good to see you again. Well, my first question is, I was stunned to read that last year's harvest was down 15%. Why, and do you look for a repeat? Why were we off 15%? Is that gonna happen again? Uh, pretty easily explainable. You recall the winter of 2013, 2014 was the worst winter that we've had on record. Uh, since we've been taking winter severity index measurements in the state, so that's decades. Um, we had uh, winter losses in 2013, and uh, we also, the result of that is uh, lower production uh, the following year. Um, and in addition to that, much of it was by design because we had 19 units in northern Wisconsin that we did not allow the, uh, any antlerless harvest to take place. So they were buck only units. So we took away some of that opportunity to allow that, that population to grow. We protected that antlerless segment of the harvest. Well, is, it, is our deer population back, Kevin? Well, no, um, it's not like flipping a light switch. Uh, it takes time to rebuild. And you know, especially when you look at northern Wisconsin, um, factors are different than they used to be in northern Wisconsin. You know, 30 years ago we'd have a bad winter, and you'd say give it a couple of years and things would bounce back very quickly. They don't bounce back as quickly as they used to. We have uh, a significant number of years where logging in northern Wisconsin was not to the point where it normally would have been. Um, so you, deer rely on young forests quite a bit, so that habitat has changed significantly. Uh, not favorable to deer, but the good news is that some of that is turning around. But we have more big predators out there than we had 30 years ago. Our wolf population, of course, is higher. Our bear numbers are higher. Um, when you look at just access to deer in northern Wisconsin, the number of houses, the density of homes in northern Wisconsin, you used to have these big uh, timber company properties that were managed heavily for timber, which was good for wildlife. A lot of those sold off, sold them in 20 acres and 40 acre pieces, and now there's a house sitting on those. So all of those little things that change make it more difficult for the deer population to rebound in northern Wisconsin or to give hunters access to those deer. Let's back up and to one thing, as you just said. Last year we had 19 northern Wisconsin counties that were buck only. Correct. And what's the number this year? The number this year is 12. So we still have many of those same counties where we continue to try to allow the population to, to build back to a, you know, a more satisfying level for hunters. Um, where you see the, the counties that were buck only last year and are no longer buck only counties this year, those are kind of what we call fringe counties. So they're kind of in that transition from farmland to forest land. Much of the county may actually be farmland uh, type area and so those populations grow quicker. Our farmland areas are much more productive and deer populations do rebound much quicker in those farmland areas. If I want to hunt in one of these 12 counties, how am I told that I'm going to hunt indeed in one of these 12 counties? How do I learn that this is a, what's the term, buck only? It's a buck only county. Um, you know, most people go back to the same counties year after year after year. Um, okay. The vast majority of hunters hunt the same areas every year. So if they knew it was buck only last year, it, you know, all they need to do is look at the hunting regulations this year and it's very quickly they'll, they'll see what we're talking about. And uh, for somebody watching the show and they want to go to your website to see which, which, which are these 12 counties, which website should they go to? Uh, I believe it's dnr.wi.gov. GOV. Thanks yep. very much. Now, um, let's talk about the biggest change you said in decades in terms of uh, registering deer. Yeah, this is uh, one of the longest standing um, requirements that we've had in the state of Wisconsin is that for since the 1960s, um, folks have had to take their deer to a physical registration station. There, there's always been about 600 of those in the state and they would uh, take their deer in and, and somebody would come out and look at the deer. Um, a lot of times they might actually open the jaw up and, and see how old that deer is by tooth wear and replacement. Um, and they would fill out a piece of paper, they would get a metal tag clipped on that animal and they would be done. So that's a requirement, um, always has been a requirement, but that whole system has changed now. We've gone to the electronic age. Yep. Uh, we're actually one of the last states in the Midwest to go to uh, using electronic methods for registering their deer. But now it's as simple as picking up the telephone or going on the internet 
and you can register your deer in a matter of, matter of a couple of minutes. Um, it's very easy, it's convenient. Most hunters are seem to be quite happy with it. Um, there, you, go ahead. Well, l l let's do a point by point summary of this new rule because it's such a profound change. Number one, you must you must register the deer by five by five p.m. of the day after it's killed. Right, that is a change. That's a big that's yeah, a big change. Because it is. It, what's the old rule? Well, the old rule was during the archery season you had three days after you had taken that animal, and during the gun deer season, the nine day gun deer season, you had until the Monday after the close of the season. Um, so that accommodated those folks that would go out to their camp and never leave their camp the entire week. Um, but you know, with this electronic age. Uh, most folks can, you know, at the very least, jump in the truck and go a few miles down the road, and they're probably going to get cell reception. Um, so just because of the, you know, the the ease of doing it, um, the vast majority of hunters, it's not going to be a problem for. But them. how are hunters, was, because it's such a big change, how are they going to be notified that now, by 5 p.m. the day after you harvest the deer, you must register? Well, it's like any new rule. We publish the hunting regulations. We have had so much out in the media. Uh, on the television, you know, on our own deer hunt show, on our website, we've been pushing this electronic registration, trying to get people primed up, you know, for actually over a year. You might recall last year we talked about we ran a pilot of it, mm -hmm. and we allowed 14,000 hunters last year around the state, every county of the state, to use the system, and we had over 10,000 deer registered using it. Um, they provided us with feedback as to what worked and what didn't. We made a lot of tweaks to try to make you know the current system even better and so far it looks like we've done a fairly good job of that um, you know we've we've made tweaks as we've gone even this fall we've run into a few little problems uh, some of it user error okay um, it's a new thing and it's kind of one of those you know it's gonna take some time um, just like all the rules I mean as far as other rules go this is a pretty quiet year compared to what we had over the last few years with the That's new true. the deer trustee report and all of those uh, changes so um, overall, it's a pretty quiet year, but this is a big thing and it affects anybody that's successful in the woods. But uh, I think if they, they give it a try, I think they're going to find it's quite easy. Okay, let's go back to the summary. After tagging the hunter, as you said, must register online uh, at, and, and, and we give the website or via the phone number. Right. You may register at participating registration stations. Now, mm -hmm. if I'm hunting in an area with no cell phone coverage, I should go to one of these and the stations go, is going to register my, my harvest? They can. Um, I mentioned that we used to have about 600 stations. We currently have about 250 that have offered to do this again as a service to hunters, um, but they will do it on the phone or on the internet. So it'll still be an electronic uh, registration process. But basically it's, you know, you might go to the same tavern or grocery store or whatever it might have been in the past that are still offering the service. Uh, you won't fill out the paperwork or anything like that. They may just hand you the telephone and say, here's the phone number. Okay. Have at it. Have at it. Yeah. Okay. Hunters must re record the confirmation number on the, deer, uh, on the deer carcass tag. Right. So when they register that animal, the, the thing that tells them that they have successfully completed the process uh, is that they'll get a 10-digit confirmation code. Okay. Um, and that um, they need to have a ballpoint pen with them is the best way to go about it. Um, and they will write that confirmation number on the carcass tag that, that they have attached to the deer. So that now is going to replace that old metal tag right. that got clipped onto the deer. They'll just hang on to that with the confirmation number. So if they get uh, contacted by a conservation warden, he can quickly or she can quickly look at that number and they can know that that animal was, was registered. They may run it and you know, make sure that everything is correct. Uh, we are doing compliance checks and things like that as well to test you know, just how many people are complying with the rules. This seems to rules. me a change in the social fabric of Wisconsin deer it hunting. It is. Because you had 600 stations, and so you got a deer, and you were proud of that deer, 12 points, 16 points. You'd bring it in and take pictures for everybody, right. and now you do this electronically? Where's the social joy in that? Well, I mean, is the social joy in deer hunting really going to go away? <laughs> Most of the social joy for folks is at their camp, um, but after the hunt, people are still going to the taverns. People are still going to the local archery shop. Taking the, the selfies, shop. right? There's still big buck contests going on out okay. there. The social fabric has not unwound on, on deer hunting. It has changed. There's no question about that. And I used to love to go to those stations too and, you know, 
spend 10, Look 15 minutes I and shot. seeing what, you know, folks got. But okay. that does not have to change. And, you know, from what we're hearing out in the field, it sounds like that's still going on. And, you know, this is one of the key things that probably had people most upset. Um, we heard the same thing out of Minnesota. Minnesota did this, went to this system. And our cultures, you know, among deer hunters from Minnesota to Wisconsin is very, very similar. And they said, you're going to hear some complaining for a year or two, and then it's going to go away because most of those people are going to say, this is a great system. Why did we not have this sooner? And then finally, so, the tag must, must remain with the deer until the meat is consumed? Right. Just like that old metal carcass tag you were supposed to hang on to, again, you just hang on to this. Well, with such a profound change that changes decades of practice, I have to ask this. If I either with intent or accidentally don't file miss this 5 p.m. the next day deadline, am I going to jail or what? No. Okay. What's going to happen? But it is mandatory. Um, and, you know, like this is going to be the same with any new rule. Our conservation wardens in the field use a great deal of discretion, and they are using this year, like any rule, as an, as an educational opportunity. So when they confront a hunter, uh, I shouldn't use the word confront, but um, they're talking to when hunters they in the field. With. Interact is a better word. Um, when they're uh, talking to somebody out in the field or doing those compliance checks, if the hunter has not registered that animal, they're going to say, register the animal. So if somebody forgets a day or two later, just go ahead and register the animal. No, a conservation warden is not going to come and knock on your door and tell you that you're in trouble. We want people to use the system. Um, you know, we have almost instantaneous access to this data. When we go, uh, when the nine day season starts, we're going to be updating harvest information, primarily for the media. Mm -hmm. They'll be able to track pretty much by hour of how many deer are being registered within any given county in the state or statewide. Um, and our conservation wardens can, can do the same thing. So they can very quickly you know, check if a hunter is in the field. They can check to see if that animal was registered or whatever it may be. So, and uh, Wisconsin is going to this new system. You said we're mm -hmm. one of the last states to adopt it. Just because of deer management practices, why? why? Well, like I said, the primary reason behind it is about providing convenience to the hunter, okay. um, but also for providing us with hopefully what's going to be a cost savings. Because in the past, we had to, you know, print all the materials that went out to 600 stations. We had to maintain those stations. Um, and then the real big part of it was at the end of the season, we'd have three, four, five hundred thousand registration stubs about each individual deer that got harvested. Yes. And people sat at the computer for months punching in all of that data. Okay. That's not necessary anymore. So two months worth of labor for dozens of people um, those people have other duties within the department. It's not like they're losing a, a job or anything like that. Right. They're customer service uh, folks for the most part, um, and they've got their hands full all the time. So rather than waiting until February to actually have a final deer harvest figure, we're going to have that figure after the nine-day season by Tuesday. Okay, so it's a more efficient system. Yes. Um, at uh, the DNR website, uh, what's new this year? Zone, deer management unit, and land type specific Antlerless permits mm -hmm. to help more closely manage deer population. What's that mean? Well, <laughs> um, what that means is in the past, hunters, um, there, there's a couple of different kind of antlerless tags out there. One of them is called the farmland zone tag. It's a tag that you automatically get when you buy your hunting license. And it allows you to take an extra deer in the farmland zones of the state. Um, and it's primarily because deer uh, populations are very productive there and we can allow that kind of harvest without you know doing any kind of, of negative damage to the deer population. So that permit in the past has been valid across many many counties uh, it, within a zone. It wasn't a county specific tag. It's now county specific and they also have to designate whether they're hunting on public land or private land when they ask for that tag. The, the purpose behind that is that we were uh, asked, and this is part of what came out of the Deer Trustee Report, we were asked to try to find a way to manage public lands differently than private lands because anybody that's out there deer hunting would probably agree that in most cases deer numbers, deer abundance on private properties mm -hmm. are always higher than the public properties. They're, they're not hunted as hard. Um, the habitat, if you want to call cornfields and soybean fields, habitat is, tends to be better. Um, and they don't get hunted nearly as hard. So you go to a public property 
and they get the daylights hunted out of them in many cases. That causes lower deer numbers. It causes less satisfactory hunting for a lot of people. I mean, when we do surveys, the number one thing people tell us is they want to see a deer. They don't necessarily care about harvesting a deer, but they at least want to see deer. So this is an attempt um, in one way, when, it, when you get down to the public and private land thing, is an attempt for us to try to limit harvest on public properties, increase harvest on private properties, and try to balance things out to provide a, a more uh, satisfactory hunting experience for those folks that is are Is this the, the first time property. hunters are going to be asked, are you going to hunt on public or private? Well, we've been asking that in registration, but okay. we've never required it that it be that specific on the tag that they ask for, the, ant the antlerless permit. So that is, a, that is a definite change. Isn't that a pretty inexact science? I mean, let's say I follow a deer from private land into public, and but I've told you I'm hunting private. I right. mean, have I, how, how big of a sin have I, have I that committed? That situation has always been there. You know, in the past, our old deer management units were pretty much divided, for the most part, by highways. There's always been a situation, and we've seen it before, where somebody shot a deer on one side of the road, yep. ran across and died in the other side of the road. What we tell people is just make sure that when you first encounter that animal, when you first shoot at the animal, it needs to be on the right side of the line. If it runs over onto the other side, go ahead and track it. You know, If it goes onto private property, certainly you need to have permission to go in there and, and retrieve the animal first. Um, but wherever that animal was standing when it was first shot, mm -hmm is what matters. Okay, update us on the issues with chronic wasting this in, 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 in this season, this hunt. Um, the r only real change this year in uh, the chronic wasting disease rules is that there have been some new counties added. Um, those are up in the uh, Eau Claire County, I think it's Eau Claire, Jackson, and Clark counties have been added to the CWD affected area within the state. So what that for the most part means is uh, it affects their baiting and feeding. So baiting and feeding uh, immediately become against the rules. You can't bait and feed within those counties now. So we're up to how many counties with some C, C, CWD restrictions? Yeah, it's over, half, it's over half of the counties in the state. I believe it's, I wanna say 36. Okay. Total and counties that were either had a, uh, a wild deer found with the disease a pen raised animal found with the, the disease or that occurred within 10 miles of another county. So if it's within less than 10 miles of the neighboring county, mm -hmm. that county automatically becomes a CWD affected county as well. But right now we have more than half of Wisconsin 72 counties that are CWD affected. Right. Are you professionals in DNR more worried about CWD or do you think that the problem is kind of leveled off? No. It's still a problem, but leveled off. It's it's a major concern. Major I think concern. For growing, anybody, growing concern? It, it is a growing concern because the disease is both increasing in prevalence and it's increasing in land area. It's, it's spreading across the state. So, you know, in the core area where the prevalence has been highest, you know, pretty much right from the very start, uh, we've got as much as 40% of the adult bucks are carrying the disease. Now, if you put something, if I told you that wolves were killing 40% of the bucks in a, in a unit, people would get very, very upset by that. Very excited. Now we've got a disease out there. It's, it's a chronic disease. Eventually, if that animal doesn't get shot or die of something else first, it is going to die from that disease at some point. So absolutely, that's, I mean, it, it has affected the culture of deer hunting in Wisconsin. Uh, you'll recall that first year uh, after it was discovered, deer hunting numbers, deer hunter numbers in Wisconsin dropped some, like something like 30,000, I want to say, 20 or 30,000 people That's didn't buy a license the following year. Um, some of that has come back. Um, there, I mean, I personally know people that don't even bother to get their animal tested. Um, they, just, they just go right ahead and eat it and don't even worry about it. Um, you know, it, it's still to the point where a human has never been affected by the disease. Um, there is laboratory evidence that it is possible that uh, it can jump to humans. Um, it hasn't happened yet. That may be, you know, an ideal laboratory setting, but that evidence is out there that it is a possibility at some point. So, uh, boy, yeah, I mean, talk, and uh, so that's the culture of Wisconsin deer hunting. But you know, think of that resource itself. When you've got a something out there that is spreading and increasing in prevalence as much as chronic wasting disease has done now in 
13 years. Yeah. You bet and it's a worry. And, every, you know, I just saw something the other day. Uh, so the state of Michigan has it now. Uh, they discovered it this year. Um, they've got a big campaign of keep CWD out of the UP. This is an effect. It, it is affecting the deer hunting culture, and it's a worry about the deer population itself. You and the, the new map of Wisconsin counties that are CWD affected is also on the same website? Yes. Okay. Yes, they can find all kinds of information about CWD. And I want to make sure folks know, too, that uh, we still have uh, CWD testing available. So when they get their deer, uh, they can also go on the website. They can find where one of these stations are that they can either drop. We, we started some new things this year um, to try to get more samples for CWD. Uh, we've actually got drop boxes, like deposit boxes. You can go, all the tools are there to remove that animal's head. Um, fill out the tag, put it in a bag, drop it in a drop box, and our disease uh, wildlife health folks. Is this the first year of drop boxes? Up. Yeah, we've never tried this before. Kind of like the concept of getting rid of, of uh, <clears throat> drugs that are that are no longer being used. Sort you of. can drop them off. <laughs> really? Well, and you know, part of it, you know, we talked already about uh, electronic registration, and we talked about all the positive sides of electronic registration, but it has posed new challenges for us and one of those challenges is getting our hands on directly on animals because in the past at about a hundred of those registration stations out there we would have DNR staff the first two days of the season actually aging deer and uh, collecting lymph nodes and whatnot at some of those stations we're not out there doing that to the same level anymore we still will have DNR staff out there but not to the level that we used to have so those are some challenges of, okay, how do we get our hands on these deer now, and how do we get enough samples to continue to monitor the spread of the disease and everything else? So we're trying new things uh, to try to give people the opportunity to not only have their deer tested for their own peace of mind, but to provide us with data. I find that absolutely fascinating. How many counties are going to have deer head drop-off boxes Test, so they can be tested for CWD? Yeah, you got me on that one, but I know... Southern Wisconsin, I, Northern Wisconsin? No, there's actually one up uh, in the Washburn County area. Um, I believe it's in Spooner. There may be a couple of them up there. Um, and, you know, I know we've got one down in uh, Waukesha County. There's one right out here in Black Earth uh, at the CWD testing lab. So I want to say there's maybe six, eight, ten of them out there. Oh, that's very interesting. Yeah. Um, prior to the show, you were telling me about a change that involves group hunting with youth tags. Can you walk us through that? Understand you expect it to be, to, to, to go through? Well, what we're talking about here, yeah. Um, you know, youth hunters age 17 and younger have been able to harvest an antlerless deer. They get a free antlerless deer tag with each of their deer licenses every year. And they've been able to harvest those deer statewide. So even in a buck only unit, they are able to take an antlerless deer. So last year, we had all these 19 buck only units across northern Wisconsin. There was something like 8,000 antler list deer taken. Mm -hmm. And you know, the answer to the question is how on earth can that happen in a buck only unit? Right. The vast majority of those are youth hunters. The other few are military on leave and disabled hunters have the same ability to do so. Um, when those, uh, when you've got a very bad winter followed by buck only, there's a perception out there that any doe that dies is slowing down herd growth. Mm -hmm. So when 8,000 deer got killed, that got some folks up in arms. And almost immediately, there was a push to pass a, a rule that group hunting would not be allowed because the, the uh, perception out there uh, was that it wasn't just the kids that were shooting those deer because group hunting was still allowed. Grandpa, dad, mom, whatever it might be, could also shoot an animal and the youth would put their tag on it, which is perfectly legal during mm. our gun deer season. Okay. So this movement uh, took place and it sounds like there is going to be before uh, the start of the gun deer season, uh, a new regulation in place that will take effect immediately that group bagging on those youth permits will not be allowed. So only those youth uh, hunters will be allowed to shoot that deer. Um, is this the first year that the recommendations mm. of, let me get the term right, Deer, uh, county deer advisory councils have kicked in? Yeah, that's another whole new thing that came out of the deer trustee report. Uh, we've got- Does uh, this allow advisory councils to set deer limits in each of their counties? Exactly, yes. So the work that has always been done solely by the department in the past to set antlerless quotas and permit levels 
We've now put some of that out into the hands of these county deer advisory councils. There's one in every county of the state with the exception of Menominee because of the, the tribal, tribal. Uh, boundaries. Um, and uh, each of these councils, can, uh, there's nine seats on each council. Um, many of those seats remain unfilled. Um, they, uh, they average about seven members per council. And uh, the department staff, our wildlife staff and law enforcement and forestry staff work with those councils to provide them with data. We provide them with population uh, information, browse information, all kinds of things of how deer impact the environment. And uh, then they come up with their own recommendations as to how many deer they feel need to be taken out of the county. So we started last fall, they went through a process first of just setting objectives, whether they wanted more deer, less deer, or to remain stable within the county. And they went through that process. And then almost as soon as that was done, they went into the, the quota and permit setting process for this season. So last year was the first year of that. And they're gonna turn around uh, this winter and they're gonna start, you know, they're gonna look at harvest data from this year and they are gathering public feedback. Uh, we put surveys out there and all kinds of things for them to uh, gauge other hunters and non-hunters. This is not just about hunting. It's about other folks that are out there and affected by deer as well. They gather all that information and they make their recommendations. And then, as it always has happened, their recommendations then make their way through the department. We review them. If we have concerns about a specific county, we make those concerns uh, known to the Natural Resources Board and then the Natural Resources Board makes the final determination for well, this county. Well, is there any other major changes um, governing the uh, gun deer hunt season this season that we haven't touched on? Um, a couple of big ones um, are some changes to specific seasons themselves. So not necessarily the gun deer season itself, but some seasons that follow the gun deer season. Um, something that has become a little bit uh, controversial lately because it sort of flew under the radar screen and people didn't notice that it happened is the holiday hunt that is always traditionally uh, and I say traditionally it's been about the last 10 years has occurred right around between the Christmas and the New Year's holiday um, that hunt was eliminated um, in the final deer trustee rule last February when the Natural Resources Board uh, voted on that so Okay. We, we lost a hunting opportunity right there. That's a change. That is a big change. Year. And uh, then the, the uh, four-day doe season uh, that always occurs in December, that has always been a statewide hunt. Last year, it got trimmed back to only being a central forest and central farmland hunt. Um, now this year, it's back again as a statewide hunt. So um, even those buck-only units are involved in that, but if there are no permits out there, obviously it can't go out and shoot a doe. So it is restricted somewhat in the north because of the buck only status of some of those counties. Now, there's been some news stories coming out of the Capitol. The bill that would allow pink to be worn, let's make it clear, that didn't pass. That's not going to be a part of this season, correct? As far as I know, that did I not get voted on by both houses. So that's not to say it may not happen next year, but uh, as far as I understand it right now, that one is not going to happen before this gun season. Okay. Um, do you have a position on whether you I have, the hunters I have, like you I have no should wear pink? On that. I have no position on that whatsoever. I've heard from one hunter on this on the subject. It was a female, and she was quite upset by it. She was offended by it. She was that just that somebody would think that put on you know let them wear pink and you'll get a bunch of women to go hunting and she was offended by that but that is my one and only experience I have no opinion on it I'm no not opinion an, I'm not no a, recommendations I'm not an expert on what color shows better in the woods or anything like that that's a legislative issue and I will stay away from it and then you know my last question how did you do last season last season well I always have fun I understand um, last season I went to northern Wisconsin uh, I've got a place in Vilas County and uh, it was a bit foggy and things like that. So I did not shoot a deer in the north, uh, but I did come down to southern Wisconsin, Sauk County, where there are lots of deer. And believe it or not, um, a friend of mine and I, we ended up getting three bucks on the very last day of the season. Oh, so wow. lots of deer out there, and I've been bow hunting out there um, over the last couple of weeks too, and lots of deer. So, you know, as we've had the last couple of years, and we talked on it a little bit early, Farmland country, 
seems to be plenty of deer that's going to vary by properties and everything else so it's not a big blanket there's deer standing everywhere but in general lots of deer in the farmlands not so many in the forest but hopefully those forests are starting to rebound we had a nice mild winter last year mm -hmm. if we can string a few of those together the future is going to be much better in the north saturday november 21 you're going to be in vilas county right i am not actually i have the privilege of escorting uh secretary step this year on opening day so i'm not going to tell you where we're going you're not but uh okay we'll be out there so okay. looking uh, forward to it kevin wallenfang is the big game ecologist for the wisconsin department of natural resources kevin thanks very much my pleasure good luck on opening day with secretary step thank you very much we'll see you next year thank you